Welcome to the show. You're watching the Fox Business Network. Let's get to the latest on those tense talks going on between high-level U.S. and Chinese officials in Alaska. Blake Berman is in Washington with more. Blake, good to see you. Yeah, Liz, good to see you as well. It wasn't expected to be all warm and friendly going in, and that certainly appeared to play out over the last two days in Anchorage, Alaska, between U.S. and Chinese officials. We heard just a little while ago after the talks had resumed from the U.S. Secretary of State, Tony Blinken, who said when the U.S. brought up the issues of Hong Kong, Taiwan, and cyberspace, the Chinese got a quote-unquote defensive response, or gave rather, and Blinken said the two sides are at fundamentally at odds on those issues. Here was Blinken describing the economic part of the talks. On economics, uh, on trade, on technology, uh, we told our counterparts that we are reviewing uh, these issues with uh, close consultation with Congress, uh, with our allies and partners, uh, and we will move forward on them in a way that fully protects and advances the interests of our workers uh, and our businesses. After the talks, the Chinese delegation left without addressing the U.S. media. The top negotiators for the Biden administration not yet willing to say what might come next. We were clear-eyed coming in. We're clear-eyed coming out. And we will go back to Washington uh, to take stock of where we are. That was Jake Sullivan there, the national security advisor for the Biden administration, the, uh, the uh, national security advisor and the secretary of state, Liz, did say, though, that there are areas where they believe the two sides can work together, areas like on Iran, North Korea, Afghanistan and climate. Liz. Great to see you, Blake. Thanks for your reporting. Let's get right to KT McFarland, former Trump deputy national security advisor. Uh, you know, KT, China had withering words last night for the Biden administration. It was a big fight. They were talking about U.S. human rights issues, uh, Black Lives Matters, uh, social justice problems inside the U.S. This is a big throwdown showdown between the two countries. What's going on? Yeah, well, look, at least it's now out in the open. I mean, the Chinese come to these meetings, and they have them at the beginning of every administration, at the beginning of the Trump administration. We had similar meetings with exactly the same Chinese officials. The Chinese sit down, and they read their list of what they call core interests or red lines or non-negotiable issues. In other words, stuff that's not on the table. And in this case, they talked about Taiwan, they talked about Hong Kong, and the Uyghur concentration camps. And the Chinese said, this is our business. This is domestic Chinese affairs. It has nothing to do with our negotiations, so it's not even on the table. And then the Biden administration came back and said, well, for human rights reasons, it is on the table. And sort of nothing really went past that. They, both sides are now in a stalemate. But I think it's interesting to see the Chinese response. Now, in the past, the Chinese have really kind of hidden their ambitions and their aggressiveness and their swagger, but now they're out in the open with it. They basically think that the United States is finished. 21st century belongs to China. China's going to set the terms of the deal, and the United States better fall into line. And that's what's so amazing. The, the Biden administration is talking tough against China. Now, the question will be, will they follow up the tough words with some tough deeds? Yeah, this is this is really a tough talk we're hearing right now. And now we have the Biden administration suddenly in another fight with Russia, Russia reacting angrily to President Biden, calling Russian leader Vladimir Putin, quote, a killer, calling the comment unprecedented, describing the relationship between the two countries is very bad. What do you think of Putin's idea of doing a live debate streaming TV debate with Biden? Well, you know, just think about it, Liz. If Donald Trump were president, he would jump at the opportunity to do a live debate. I'm pretty sure the Biden administration will find some excuse and some reason not to do it. But it, it is an indication that U.S.-Russian relations are not in a good place, and they're probably not going to become in a good place. And frankly, what we would have to do to make them go to a good place is probably something we don't want to do. The, the Russians and the Chinese, they both think they have this administration on the run. And it's only, only the third month of this administration. So I think they both continue to press their issues. You know, we have that. We've got also the U.S. Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, warning all companies participating in Ru Russia's Nord Stream 2 pipeline that is delivering Russian gas into Germany to stop that immediately. It just feels like there's a new potential Cold War, an escalation of it going on. And then you have this. You've got the Democrats killing a House Republican resolution 
to remove Eric, Democrat Eric Swalwell from House Intelligence. When you saw that happen, what was your reaction? Look, the guy does not belong on the House Intelligence Committee. And there is, I, Republican or Democrat, you should basically stand up for American national security and interests. What I think, though, is that Swalwell is the tip of the iceberg, Liz. We've talked about this before. I don't think he's the only guy who's been compromised by the Chinese, whether they know it or not. I'd like to see a, a government-wide investigation of where are the Chinese doing this? Where, what kind of influence are they peddling? Where, where are they have financial relationships with either members of Congress or members of administrations? You know, look at the Hunter Biden thing. We've still not resolved that. Hunter Biden is still on the, has a financial relationship with Chinese companies. The Chinese are all over this. And I think that we're, that Eric Swalwell, just the tip of the iceberg. He doesn't belong on any committees, but I really would like to know who else is in the same position. Okay, the FBI briefed uh, House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy about Swalwell's entanglement with that Chinese uh, spy and briefed mm -hmm. Nancy Pelosi as well. N Kevin McCarthy is saying that it is worse than the public realize what happened with Eric Swalwell. I'd like to ask you about that after we take a listen to Kevin McCarthy. Watch this. Intel Committee is different than any other committee we have. You get all the secrets of our nation. And it's very simple. If Eric Swalwell could not get a security clearance with a company, he should not get a, uh, be on a security clearance with a country. That's exactly what we just gave him, but he could not get one in the job in the private sector. And what's happening here is I got a classified briefing from the FBI along with Speaker Pelosi. She knows what I know, and she knows he doesn't deserve or should belong on this committee. What does Kevin McCarthy and Nancy Pelosi know that everybody else does not know? Well, my guess is that it was a financial relationship as well as, a, they call it a honeypot relationship, as well as a, you know, sex scandal, that it was probably a financial relationship because she was, she was assembling donors to invest in his campaign. And to me, that is, is, in fact, more dangerous because, you know, he needs them now, right? He needs the money that she's assembling for him um, to continue his political career. I'd like to know how many other members of Congress are in that position. And the other thing, Liz, that I, I think that most people don't understand, and I'll explain what McCarthy meant by that. When I join government, anybody who joins the executive branch or, or congressional branch, if you are become an employee of the U.S. government or a contractor or whatever, you have to fill out a really long, extensive form that says, these are the foreign, the foreigners that I've bumped into. These are the people I've met at conferences. These are the people in my life. You, you list every foreign national that you've ever had contact with for the last 10 years. And if you can't remember, Let they me ask can you say, something. well, you're lying. And I think that the should problem is be, members of Congress don't do it. Yeah, should there be a special prosecutor, a special counsel appointed to investigate whether Democrat Eric Swalwell had a quid pro quo with this alleged Chinese spy in return for her raising a lot of political donations for him back when he was a lowly city, I shouldn't say that, a city councilman back in California, mm -hmm. raised a lot of money for him. And then she got to put interns inside his congressional office on Capitol Hill. Is that a quid pro quo investigation? She looks like a pay to play to me. I mean, yes. And whether there should be a special prosecutor or what kind, I'll leave that for the lawyers to figure out. But uh, this is what the Chinese are doing. And I don't think we should just, oh, oh, no problem here, move along, which is Nancy Pelosi's attitude. The Chinese are, and it's not just Republicans and Democrats, it's everybody. It's think tanks, it's academic institutions. Swalwell is a, an egregious example of what the Chinese were able to do, and he seems only too happy to have gone along with it. How many others have done it? That's my question, Liz. Got it. K KT, we're going to try to get to the bottom of it. It's starting to sound like a congressman there always says that, but we're going to stay on the story. KT McFarland, it's good to see you. Come back soon. Next up, <laughs> Florida so Sheriff much. Wayne Ivey. Okay, Wayne Ivey, he's a great sheriff. He's coming back on the 